In Mark chapter 14, we'll begin reading in verse 17. The Bible says, And in the evening he cometh with the twelve. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, One of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful, and to say unto him, One by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he, said, and he answered and said unto them, It is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and brake it and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. Thank you for the good singing we enjoyed tonight, the good testimonies, and good fellowship with thy people. Thank you for being a good God, Lord. We just bless your holy name. Now, Father, I pray for those that are working with the children over on the other side of the building. I pray that you would use them and help them. I pray for those children, Lord, those that have reached the age of accountability, that, Lord, uh, uh, the word of God would find a special place in their heart, begin to take root. God, I pray we'd see them saved. It's a blessing last weekend to see two saved. And, Lord, we're thankful for that. Lord, I pray for those that haven't reached the age of accountability that still the word of God would uh, infiltrate their precious little minds and hearts that Lord when they do uh, uh, come to that point when they can discern the difference between good and evil God they'd give their heart and life to Jesus uh, Father I pray for those working with the teens you'd bless their efforts uh, Lord you know the peer pressure on young people today and God I pray you'd bless them and you'd help them uh, to grow and to nurture and admonition of the Lord. Uh, now Father bless the reading of the word of God. Uh, I pray you'd help your people. I pray you'd sit down amongst us. Uh, Lord you'd get glory and honor. Lord you'd be highly exalted and God we'd truly be obedient to the voice of God. Uh, now Father have your will away. We'll thank you for it for it's in the holy name of Jesus. Uh, we do ask these things and amen and amen. I want you to notice a few things. Uh, his way of introduction. I, I want you to know that uh, as they meet here for the last time, they're going to sit down and have a meal. You got to understand the disciples uh, and the Lord Jesus. Uh, 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 they spent uh, three and a half years together, Brother Donald. Uh, everywhere Jesus went, they went, uh, and He would provide for them and feed them. Uh, and it was nothing unusual for them to sit down uh, at the end of the day and have a meal. Uh, 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 but I want you to understand this is going to be the last time. Uh, that they do this uh, before Jesus goes to Calvary. Uh, now notice a few things about this. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, uh, uh, they were eating. Look again in verse uh, number 18. The Bible says, and as they sat and did eat. Look in verse 22. Uh, it says, and as they did eat. So uh, they were eating uh, and having a meal. Uh, a lot of times we want to over-spiritualize things. Uh, they literally were just sitting down uh, and eating uh, and conversing with the Lord. Now notice the expression in verse number 18. Uh, he says, And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, uh, One of you which eateth with me shall betray me. Uh, can you imagine uh, uh, being in the setting? Here they are with the Lord. Uh, they're eating, uh, 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 no doubt. Uh, 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 they're talking amongst themselves. No, no doubt they're having fellowship. Uh, and all of a sudden the Lord says verily uh, now uh, listen uh, when Jesus uh, whenever he said something you better pay attention uh, it's important uh, but when he would say verily that means it's going to be greatly important uh, 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 you better really pay close attention uh, and in the midst of them having this meal brother Thad uh, in the midst of uh, uh, brother Nodge and them sitting there fellowship and eating uh, Jesus says verily uh, uh, one of you that eateth with me shall betray me. Uh, can you imagine tonight uh, if the Lord was here uh, and he looked at this crowd uh, and he said one of you here tonight uh, is going to betray me. Boy wouldn't that be terrible? 
but we see that expression. He lets them know one of them is going to be a betrayer. Notice, uh, if you will, uh, uh, the examining that goes on after the statement. Uh, uh, look what it says. Uh, it says in verse number 19, And they began to be sorrowful. We would be too. Hmm? If the Lord revealed unto us that in here tonight was a traitor, we'd be sorrowful. I mean, we've, we've spent a lot of time together. Some of them we've spent years together. It'd be terrible to find out that one who professes to be one of Jesus' disciples uh, is nothing more than a traitor. Hmm? Now, I know we live in a day and age where uh, this millennial crowd, they don't really care about anything. We live in a day and age where patriotism isn't what it used to be. I'm thankful there's still something that'll stand to attention when the national anthem's being played, uh, put their hand over their heart. Uh, I'm glad there's still some that uh, understands what it is to be an American uh, and that men and women have served and fought. Uh, some have bled and died, that we have the freedoms and that we have the liberties uh, 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 that we have. Uh, but listen, uh, used to, uh, uh, in America, if somebody was a traitor, uh, that was in shockwaves throughout the nation. But now in the recent years, uh, 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 we find that there have been people sell out some of our greatest secrets uh, uh, to the highest bidder, some of our military secrets uh, uh, to China. Aren't you glad, Brother Charlie, uh, and you saw that nuclear sub going to places you can't even tell us where you was? Uh, aren't you glad uh, uh, that somebody didn't sell out where you was uh, uh, so one of our enemies couldn't have uh, uh, dropped uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, torpedo down there and destroyed that submarine? But I want to tell you, there have been traitors that would have done that for the highest bidder. Hmm? Sure. Can I say? There have been traitors of the faith. We can look in the scriptures and find uh, 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 people like Diotrephes who love it to have the preeminence. Uh, and there have uh, uh, been countless people uh, in local churches throughout the centuries uh, 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 that would uh, turn over folks to the, tra uh, to the uh, folks that would do the church harm uh, for the highest bidder. There's one right here, and this is where they learn it from. Matter of fact, you know the story. Judas sold him for 30 pieces of silver. Mm -mm. He said, one of you is going to betray me. They began to be sorrowful. Now look what they said in verse number 19. They said, and they, were, they began to be sorrowful and to say unto him one by one, is it I? And another said, is it I? Mm -mm. Thank God they were concerned. You know, when it comes to the things of God, we ought to be concerned. Yes, sir. You know, the Bible says if we judge ourselves, we wouldn't be judged. Amen. Hmm? Can I say that the Apostle Paul says, let a man examine himself whether he be of the faith. We ought to always take spiritual inventory. Lord, am I where you, uh, you'd have me to be? We preached on that living water this morning. Uh, we preached on folks uh, having, uh, you know, being in dead water. Some uh, uh, folks, their rivers are dammed up. Their spiritual life has come to a halt. Uh, and uh, there wasn't a whole lot did inventory because a lot of them didn't come back tonight. Hmm? Hmm. Thank God for folks that have a spiritual barometer. You ought to be concerned when you just start even just a little bit start getting cold on the things of God. I'll be red flags go up inside your life, huh? They began to examine themselves. Now notice how this thing's going to end. Look at verse 21. The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him. We, we know looking back, and you can go back and look throughout the, the prophets and, and, and look at how many times Jesus had foretold them that the word of God would have to be fulfilled, that he didn't come to be Lord, he came to be the Lamb. And we know that the scripture was going to be fulfilled and he was going to go to Calvary. He came knowing he was going to Calvary. But look what else he says. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. I wonder how many times in the last 2,000 years while he's frying in the pits of hell, Judas has thought, boy, it wasn't worth them 30 pieces of silver. Hmm? Amen. You see, he took that money, then he tried to give it back. But see, uh, once you commit a heinous sin against God, the only thing that's going to take care of it is the blood of Christ. Right. Then he went out and he hung himself. Then I want you to notice the enacting. 
Now, we don't have time to get into really verses 20 through through 25, but that's where he enacted the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. Mm, can I say the Catholics use the term communion? It's not communion. It's remembering the Lord's table. It's remembering what it costs for us to be able to come to worship. It's remembering how wonderful of a sacrifice that it took that you and I would have the privilege of being saved, that we're not uh, bound to sin anymore, Brother Clint. Amen. The slave's been freed by the master. Amen. There's that old song, uh, I'm a slave to the master. Huh? What a blessing yeah. to be bound to him. Amen? Amen? But we see the enacting of the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. And I got to thinking about all this and, and got to thinking about in verse number 18, verse 22, where they ate. Where they broke bread with the Lord. And I'm going to preach on breaking bread with Jesus. Amen. Hmm? Uh, can I say he was the bread of life. And as we read this morning, never a man spake like Jesus spake. And when Jesus would begin to expound on the things of God, can you imagine that? And him being the living bread, and he gives us the bread of life, the word of God. Uh, we get to look into this perfect law of liberty and begin to uh, uh, examine the things of God and be able to embrace the things of God and enjoy the things of God. Uh, what a privilege uh, when the Lord just seems to set a table before us uh, and we get to sit down with the Lord uh, and He begins to illuminate the Scriptures. Uh, we get to break bread with the Lord uh, and the Lord begins to flood our souls and flood our minds uh, with the things of God. Uh, you lose track of who you are and where you are you're at uh, when God gets so big uh, that you get to break bread with him uh, and enjoy uh, feasting at his table uh, I got to thinking about breaking bread with Jesus can I say first of all when you break bread with Jesus there's intimacy Amen. can I say I don't know how many people were on the earth when this account of scripture was being fulfilled but only 12 were in that room with him yeah. Yeah. Mm. the Bible says many are called but few are chosen and if you look at how many billion people's on the face of the earth tonight, what a privilege to be one of the chosen few. Huh? Listen, uh, I'm not a Calvinist, uh, but I'm sure thankful Jesus said whosoever will, uh, but I'm not a fool either. Uh, not everybody's getting in. Uh, hey, the general call goes to everyone. Uh, and when you take the gospel to people, there's a specific call. Uh, I'm glad I got in. Uh, I'm glad I'm one of the remnant. Uh, I'm glad I'm one that's a-going when the trumpet blows. Uh, hey, what a blessing to be one of His. Uh, uh, but listen, when you break bread with Him uh, and you feast with Him, uh, there's an intimacy about that. Uh, not everybody gets to experience that. Uh, can I say not every believer gets to experience that? Because a lot of them don't want to feast with him. Uh, what a lot of them don't want to sit down with him. Uh, a lot of them don't want to hear what thus saith the Lord. Uh, but there's an intimacy. Isn't it wonderful to have relationships with people? Isn't it wonderful to have good friends? Isn't it wonderful to have a good church family that Brother Clint we are made joint heirs of? Uh, 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 look around. Uh, uh, the world says we're the off scour of the world. Uh, 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 the world says uh, uh, that we're not uh, wired right. we got to depend on some fictitious being out there somewhere. Uh, hey, but hang around, neighbor. Uh, one of these days the world's going to realize we were screwed on the right boat. Are you listening? Uh, hey, uh, aren't you glad? Uh, uh, even though the world says we're crazy uh, aren't you glad we can have a relationship with Christ uh, and I'm glad I get to talk with him and walk with him uh, I'm glad that every now and then as I preach this morning that well, the water bubbles up. Uh, I'm glad. Uh, uh, Miss Veronica, as you sang this morning, uh, when you're in the valley, I'm glad he'll come by and let you know he's still there. Uh, I miss Pam, even though he may not have answered them prayers, uh, he still comes by uh, and he blesses you, lets you know he's hearing those prayers and forgot about you. What a Savior. Uh, I'm glad I know him. I'm glad when you really get down to where it's just you and him, and you get to in the book and all of a sudden it turns 3D and the words start jumping off the page. So preach, I ain't never had that. You ought to try it sometime. Uh, quit reading the Bible to try and find something. Just read the Bible to find Him. 
you'll find out some things about him. And there's an intimacy. And all of a sudden you feel like there's nobody else in the world but you and him. And he begins to speak to you. And boy, you really feel like you're somebody when he gets to speaking to you. huh? I mean, we're nobody. The psalmist said, What is man that thou art mindful of him, the son of man that thou visit? Who are we that the king of glory would go to Calvary for? Who are we that the king of glory would save us? Huh? Even if he saved us, huh? we're not, it's not even worthy to be servants in his house. Huh? But he's made us uh, 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 joint heirs. He's adopted us into the family of God. Huh? And you look around here, this isn't the Oscar. Huh? This is a royal priesthood, huh? a chosen generation. Huh? Uh, we're above the rudiments of this world. Uh, you realize when we get to Kevin, uh, heaven, Kevin, uh, uh, you're not going to be short. Uh, hey, what a blessing. Uh, but when we get there, do you realize the angels are going to take a back seat to us? Uh, uh, why? Uh, we're the ones he bled and died for. Uh, we're the ones that have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, what a blessing to be part of that crowd. And when we break bread with him, there's an intimacy as this world don't know. It's wonderful to have relationships. It's wonderful to have friends. Do you know why the Lord gave us the church? He knew we'd need one another. He knew that all week long the world would beat up on you. Your flesh would beat up on you. The devil would beat up on you. He knew that you'd have to come apart from all of that and come to the oasis of the house of God where you could worship the Lord. Uh, where you could find folks that have like passions and like desires uh, who too have trusted in Christ. Uh, where you could come and worship. Uh, where you could hear folks testify that God's been good. Uh, folks sing about Jesus. Uh, hey, he knew we needed one another. But then there's times he knows that we can't help one another. And he steps in. And oh, what an intimate time we can have with him when he tells us from the Word of God that he loves us. It's one thing when the preacher said, God loves you. Another thing when Jesus says, I love you. Are you listening? Oh, the Bible's the greatest love story ever written. Uh, and I thank God for the Word of God. I thank God for those times I've got to break bread with Jesus. Can I say there's intimacy when you break bread with Him? Can I say this? There's instruction when you break bread with Him. He begins to instruct you in some things. He begins to teach you some things. He tends to grow you up in some things. He tends to reveal Him and His purpose and His cause for your life. He tends to give you a song and a verse to go with the song and then let you come to a Sunday night service and make a plain that it's now when you got to sing the song. Yes, hmm. Where did he get all that instruction? He spent time with Jesus. Yes, hmm. uh, listen, I can always tell when folks sing if they've been with Jesus and if they haven't. Yes, There's a difference. I've seen folks sing when it's about them and their talent. Uh, listen, our church don't take a backseat to anybody when it comes to talent. But can I say this? The folks that get up on this platform and saying it's not about them and their talent. It's about the master. Amen. And you can tell when folks have been with Jesus. And you can tell when the song means something to them. Uh, and boy, what a blessing, huh? Sure. But there's instruction when you break bread with Jesus. You never find Jesus sitting down with his disciple that he isn't in some way, shape, or form instructing them. He's teaching them. A lot of times he'll sit down with them after they've had a busy day and he's performed miracles and he's taught lessons and, and all that. And they'll sit down with him and, sit, and, then, and they'd ask him, what do you mean by all that? I don't understand that. And he'd break it down to where they could understand it. See, he's instructing. Aren't you glad, Brother Phil, that Jesus never will talk over your head? Now, I've been in some meetings where some of these Baptist preachers think that, uh, you know, they're the Baptist Pope, and they think that they need to show you how much they know. Well, can I say something? Jesus knows everything. But he makes it so simple that even a child can understand. Huh? Oh, that's my kind of Jesus. Are you listening? And when he begins to instruct you, he'll give it to you on your level. Hmm? And I bless his holy name. Hmm? When you break bread with him, there's intimacy, there's instruction. But can I say this? There's also insight. He tells them, one of you going to betray me. 
And then he says, it's the one that's going to dip sop with me. Hmm? One portion, he told Judas that, that he's going to do, do it quickly. Hmm? There was insight. He not only told him one of them was going to betray him, he told him who it was. Hmm? You know how I know the disciples were Jewish and not rednecks? Rednecks would have took Judas out and beat the snot out of him. They'd have learned him some things. Are you listening? Uh, but how many times did Jesus tell him he was going to Jerusalem, be betrayed in the hands of angry men, and he was going to be crucified? It'd go right over their head. How many times have we heard preaching and we really don't take it to heart till the rubber meets the road? Hmm? But see, when you're breaking bread with him, you get some insight. You, you get some special oomph on it. That's the best way I can put it. There have been times I've I've wondered something, brother, right? And I'd read something, read something, and wonder, and I'd read what everybody else say something. But then all of a sudden I'm not searching everything trying to find that out. I'm just reading the Bible and just thinking about the Lord and all of a sudden he shows up. And out of nowhere he'll reveal what I was wondering. See when you sit down with him and you're breaking bread with him. He just gives you insight. Huh? That's when you get the desires of your heart, by the way. Because hmm? when you're breaking bread with him and you're in that intimate setting with God, all you really want is more him. Hmm? And oh, that's when he floods those desires of your heart. Hmm? There's instruction. There's insight. Can I say this? When you sit down and break bread with Jesus, there's infatuation. Hmm? There's nobody like him. Even Pilate said, I find no fault in him. There's nobody like Jesus. And you just become infatuated with him. Huh? I feel sorry for this crowd that says that they're saved and their face looks like... Looks like all they got for Christmas was a Chia pet. You know what I'm saying? Now, we're not saved by our feelings and our emotions but can I say we're saved by faith but when you get saved somewhere sometime you're going to be in a service where you're going to have some feelings show up you, you, might, you might shed some tears you might smile real big you might even wave your hand you might even jump up and say amen I don't know but if you're truly born again somewhere somehow sometime it's going to show out on you hmm I worry about this crowd that says they're saved, but they never seem to be infatuated with Jesus. Amen. Hmm? I mean, all he did was die for you and then change your life. Yeah. Maybe they're not infatuated because there's not been a change. Well, there it is. Amen, we said this morning, it's one thing to know of him. It's another thing to know him. It's one thing to believe in Jesus. another thing to believe on Jesus. Yeah. Hmm? But listen, there'll be some infatuation. When you're in the presence of Jesus, can I say, first of all, you'll find a love like you've never known. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. No one's ever loved you like Jesus loves you. Yeah. Hmm. There's been times when I prayed over my children, prayed over my family, and I, I always have to come to this point where I just say, well, Lord, you love me more than I do. When you come to realization, nobody loves like Jesus loves. And when you're breaking bread with him, you'll find that out. You'll find a love like you've never known. Hmm? Why do you think when Jesus walked out by all these fellows, a lot of them were professionals in their day. I mean, Peter's sitting there, uh, he's got a, a thriving fishing business. James and John, thriving fishing business. Uh, you had uh, 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 Matthew, who was a tax collector. You had uh, uh, Luke, who was a physician. And all these men had prominent roles in their life. Jesus just come by, looks at them, says, follow me. And they dropped everything they didn't follow him. Why was that? Because they never met anybody like him. And they'd never known a love like the love he displayed for them. Hmm? Can I say this? You get so infatuated because of the love that you'll find in Jesus. But can I say this? In His presence, you'll find a desire to learn like you've never had before. I've known folks who couldn't even hardly read and they get saved. And that's all they do is read. 
They want to know more about him. Yes, you get infatuated about him, you'll want to know everything you can about him. Huh? I really worry about that crowd that says they get saved and they never want to come back to church. I like that crowd when they get in. They not only get in with both feet, they get in with all of it. Are you listening? They just want to They want to soak up everything they can. Kind of like that, that fellow sitting there on the, on the front row, Donald Trump sitting over there, huh? <laughs> he just can't get enough. You know why? Because he got in. Yeah. Amen. I remember when some of you all got in. You couldn't get enough. Huh? I can't believe it's been 16 years, Brother Kevin. Huh? You say, how come he's still here? Because he got something, uh, and it did something for him, uh, and he still can't get enough. Huh? He even brought Sheila. Huh? What a blessing. Huh? Can I say, when you break bread with him, you'll get infatuated. You'll find uh, you'll have a longing for more of him. Hmm? Listen, it's no secret there are certain, certain foods I like. I love Cheesecake Factory. The portions are so big you don't have room for cheesecake, but I always find room. <laughs> so I like their cheesecake. Even though I'm mad at them, they changed our favorite. They used to have this hot fudge brownie cheesecake, man. That stuff was uh, wonderful. And they changed it. The closest thing they got is the 30th anniversary cheesecake, you know. But I, I, I don't care. They got 47 to Brady's. Put one in front of me. I'm putting it down. Are you listening? Because I like it. Huh? There are certain things I like. And I don't get upset going after more. Hmm? Now, I don't want to eat Cheesecake Factory every day. But I do want to speak to Jesus every day. I do want to come worship again. Because I've enjoyed it so much and I just want some more. Boy, I mean, we had such a wonderful weekend last weekend. I just wanted to come back this weekend for some more. Are you listening? I mean, God's just good. And he's kind of like cotton candy. You put him in your mouth and it's just, man, it was wonderful. But you never get filled up. You just want more. Are you listening? When you get infatuated with him through breaking bread with him, you just want more and more and more. Been saved 45 years. I've never come to a place where I've said, okay, that's enough, God. I don't need any more. Amen. Uh, well, the closer I get to, to heaven, the more I want. Yeah. Hmm? Let me say this. Breaking bread with Jesus. There's an intimacy. There's instruction. You'll find infatuation. You'll find insight. You'll find other things. You'll find inspiration, illumination, all kinds of things. But never lose sight of the fact. When you sit down to break bread with Jesus, there'll be an intruder there. Eleven of them sold out for Jesus. Matter of fact, the Lord took those and added the Apostle Paul and turned the world upside down with twelve men. But while he's opening blind eyes, while on three different occasions he raised somebody from the dead, while he touched the halt, the mind, and the maimed, and and touched their bodies, and they were made whole. Uh, while he spoke words of wisdom, Judas heard every message that he preached. But he still was an intruder. Every time we meet, every time we come to worship, the devil's already here waiting on us. Every time you get down on your knees to pray, the devil's right there putting all kinds of wicked thoughts in your mind or trying to take your mind somewhere else so you don't uh, uh, spend time talking with the Father. And I say every time you open your Bible, the devil do everything he can to distract your attention away from the Bible. Listen, I've been a preacher for 32 years. There are times I open my Bible, get to read, and next thing I know, my mind's somewhere else. I don't even know what I've read. You know what I do? I apologize to the Lord. I go back and I read it again. Hmm? I'm going to tell you, there's an intruder. Just like in that parable of the sower, when the fowls of the air came and stole away the seed that had been sown, every time the seed of the Word of God is planted, there's a fowl around trying to take it away. There's an intruder. That's why I said, I've said this before, it's been a while, but you better be careful praying out loud. 
Now listen to me. Lord is omniscient. omniscient. Lord knows everything. He's omnipotent. He's all powerful. Uh, uh, he's everywhere all the time. He's omnipresent. The devil's none of those things. The devil can't know what's in your heart and the devil don't know what's in your mind. He puts things in your mind, but he don't know what's in your mind, in your heart. And if you pray out loud to the Lord, guess who's listening? Yes. And heaven help you if, you if you pray out loud and you say, Lord, I'm really struggling in this area of my life. And guess who's listening? Yes. And guess what area of your life he's going to attack? Mm -hmm. That place you're struggling. Mm -hmm. You better be very careful when you're praying and talking and communing with the Lord as there's always an intruder around. Better be very careful even when you come to church uh, who you talk to and what you talk to them about because there might just be an intruder sitting here. Amen. Might be somebody that can't betray the Lord but they can betray you. Mm -hmm. mm. And never lose sight of the fact while we're here worshiping there may be somebody here that's claim they're saved but they're really not and they need the Lord as their Savior that's why you ought to always be in a spirit of worship in a spirit of prayer and be real sensitive and mind the Holy Ghost because there may be somebody here that the devil's hoodwinked they think they're saved but they never got under conviction and got lost we could go and go and go of how many people that are lost church members and gotten saved. Can I say? The devil's slick. He's crafty. If he can make a lost person think they're saved, he's won the battle. Because before they can ever get saved, they've got to get lost. And can I say, a lot of people have a real issue admitting that. Listen, there's something special about breaking bread with the Lord. When's the last time you just broke bread with him? When was the last time you just spent some wonderful, alone, intimate time with the Lord? Friend, that's the best times you'll ever have in your Christian life. Some of the best times I've ever had with the Lord has been down on my knees on an altar. Him just flooding my soul with Himself. Some of the best times I've ever had in my, in my life is just reading the Word of God and Him revealing Himself in a wonderful way. Amen. Taught my Sunday school class this morning on Joshua looking over Jericho and and uh, uh, the Lord, the captain of the Lord's host, which was Jesus, manifested himself in the Old Testament. Uh, he showed up in, Je in Joshua. Just He was overwhelmed. I want to tell you something. When you're really seeking after God, he'll show up in unusual ways and do great things for you. There's nothing like breaking bread with him. How long has it been that you've just spent some time with Jesus? Where you've just told him how wonderful he is. How much he means to you. How thankful you are that he saved you. Amen. How much you appreciate that he's went to prepare a place for you. Sure. When was the last time you just bragged on how wonderful and awesome and, and just uh, how beautiful and wonderful and everything he is. I mean there's, there's just something about bragging on him. That he just manifests himself. When was the last time? Oh, why don't you tonight just make up your mind you're going to start breaking bread with Jesus more. It changed your life. Amen. And can I say, it may rub off you and rub on somebody else. It may change their life. Listen, you can't spend time with Jesus and people around you not know it. God help us to learn to break bread with Jesus. Let's all stand, Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. As they're picking out a song, why don't you just mind the Lord tonight? Maybe just want to come tell him you love him. I don't know. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. I know there wasn't much in that message, just a simple little thought. Lord, sometimes them simple thoughts are the most uh, wonderful thoughts. Lord, there's nothing like sitting down and spending time with you. So, Father, I pray you'd help your people realize the importance of just yielding, spending time with you, communing with you, bragging on you, just listening and hearing from you. So, God, I pray you'd bless this invitation.
Lord, I don't know the need of anybody's heart here tonight, but you know everybody's need. And I pray that, Lord, you'd speak to hearts. And certainly, God, if there's somebody here tonight unsaved, God, I pray you'd reveal unto them their lost condition. And I pray they'd come, put their faith and trust in the Lord. Now, Lord, have your will and way amongst us now. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it. For it's in the wonderful, and holy, and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.